Hi guys, Hengist here from House Hengist Comics and a big welcome back to the channel Beansters. Welcome to the front line to our new subscribers too and I hope you're all doing well. Today it is Blitz Steel, uh, episode 34 of our Blitzkrieg series, The Battle of Hanau. Uh, this is what a lot of people have been waiting for, this big huge tank confrontation. And uh, let's get into the news straight away. And we're going to be looking at the attack vectors here. This is between 3rd and 2nd Division Le Leger Mechanique under Blanchard's 1st Army against 3rd and 4th Panzer under Herpner. Uh, it's a massive tank battle, nearly a thousand tanks to engage. We've got three days. The first day, actions around Hanau, really, with 4th uh, Panzer and 3rd Panzer. Then the commodification and build up uh, as they sort of move around the flanks and into a free for all here as we get back to Gemblo. Uh, ultimately, and the research will show this, and we've done a lot on this, uh, that basically the Germans weren't able to penetrate, but the French did withdraw. Look at Osprey's map with all these tactical deployments. Fantastic stuff and a lot of information there. Also a great map here showing the contouring uh, and effectively the critical junctures. The Germans have a massive advantage. They've got air support uh, and that's going to basically cause some problems as we can see from this sort of pinpoint accuracy as the Stukas deliver their 250 kilos or 500 kilo bombs. But with all tank actions, and especially one like this, a lot of it's going to be how you get your units into action, pull them out, refit, refuel, and get them back into the fight. And um, a lot of the stuff that we've done so far in the testing has, has, is going to make this quite a tough ask for all the players concerned. And I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail. But one of the things that I really wanted to talk about quickly were the forces involved. And so we'll get to that uh, after we've looked at uh, what the tank forces and the overall strengths and weaknesses are. Okay, let's look at the French forces today. These are under the First Army, which is Blanchard. We've got characters such as Biot and obviously Prio, who's in charge of the cavalry. They've got two Division Leger Mechanique which are commanded by Bougrain the second and Langlois the third and basically most of the forces that they have include these tanks the Hotchkiss 35 and 39 which is the longer variant um, they've got good armor they're very versatile tanks but their their sort of firepower isn't that particularly great um, where their strength will particularly lie is in their other tank support their mechanized infantry and of course the uh, the fearful uh, Suma, the S-35, a beast of a tank basically, and they've got equal numbers of these within their, their forces. They've got around uh, 400 tanks and uh, also they have panards. These are very good, well equipped uh, armoured cars. Uh, here's some fabulous tanks that Paul Shop Paul had prepared and we're going to be looking at these in conjunction with the motorised infantry that will be supporting them. Many of them are in these lafty trucks uh, there's also going to be some reconnaissance elements on motorbikes as well. But uh, these are the, probably the better forces with their 25mm anti-tank guns as well. And we, we'll see other stuff throughout this campaign. But ultimately they've got a lot of artillery as well. They went for 75mm so they haven't got as many uh, heavy guns but they've got more batteries per se. So it's going to be about mechanised forces for the French throughout this mini-series. For the German forces, um, they've got two divisions operational, that's the 3rd under Stumpf and the 4th under Stever. Hopner's commanding 16th Corps and he's under Reichenau, who's 6th Army, that uh, famous army that is to be defeated at Stalingrad. Well, let's start looking at the uh, Panzer divisions. They're made up of about 600 tanks in all. Uh, mainly, uh, at least 40% are Panzer 1s and Panzer 2 tanks. Uh, very light armoured tanks, not really uh, capable of taking on the French armour. The Panzer III, probably only about 12% of them within the division. Uh, and they are the, the mainstay battle tank and an excellent tank uh, uh, as well. But also supporting them, we will see uh, an important tank, the Panzer IV, which goes on to develop. This has got uh, heat rounds for anti-tank work and also carries phosphorus smoke ammunition. Uh, the Panzer IV will be critical in this battle. And also, the, the Panzer divisions, their 2nd Brigade, like the French Brigade, is mainly made up of infantry and reconnaissance. These will be Motorsjurt or Panzer Grenadier. And they also have the Pac-36 anti-tank guns, which will be very, very important also. 
The 88s, well, they will be there firing air bursts possibly, but won't be used in an anti-tank role. And the Germans have 105 and heavier artillery as well, which will come into play on this mini-series. Well, let's now look at the background and research to this operation. Well, the, uh, this is the Panzer Angrief, the main thrust. Uh, we've got 16th Corps striking towards Gembelo to effectively prevent uh, the French digging in and holding that position and then to link up with the main panzers that will be thrusting out towards the coast. So it's an important facet because the Meuse is the main real operation. This other operation really is, is, is effectively to draw that first armour in as we can see here so it can't get down and counter-attack at the Meuse. We'll be doing loads of particular battles around this. I think there are about eight in all. Uh, it could be a, a large number of episodes. Well, the main battles will be Hanau, Krayen, Thysnes, Orblegran, Jandaran, Merdor, uh, Agezi and Pervez, all in that particular order. Let's now look at the operational position at the 11th. Well, the French with uh, 2nd and 3rd DLM are stretched really from uh, Tienen area all the way down to Hoi. The German panzers will be driving on trying to s prevent them and make a bridgehead at Gembleau. The French armour is obviously there to stop them, they've been lured into this trap. And key to the facets of what we're going to be trying to look at through this campaign are a number of things. Command and control, that's really, really important and we want to examine that. The tactics and formations that are used, especially the keels as we can see here and how effective they are, as well as, as I said, the local tactics that are operated by the platoons. So that's critical. We're also going to be examining the weapons and sort of firepower and damage of the forces involved. We'll be looking at basically and keeping track of the losses and ultimately, really important is refitting and also rotating platoons so that they can be kept in that fight as we said earlier. So critical to this game will be the logistics arm as well which we've tested and we're really looking forward to it. So as we've got this sort of uh, race basically as both sides clash although the French are in a more defensive position it's a rather thin line per se. Here's a, a, an operational map around Hanau that we've dug up and here's Sam's first phase which is the first contact on the 12th and we will go into the second part of the skirmish action that it's defined as uh, also later. We're going to be using Achtung Panzer as usual. Uh, the rules are nearly finished now and we've got the long process of writing it all up. Uh, we use our decks as you're well aware. So without further ado, let's get into the battle action guys. And today I think it's going to be absolutely splendid. So without further ado, let's see those Panzers march. Well, in Hanno, uh, a small trap detachment of Belgians occupies it. It is waking to the shuddering, thudding sounds of tanks moving on Hanno. And as we can see here, there are some minefields that have been placed. Uh, these have been put down by some French pioneers. The objectives, two of these bridges and the farm. Uh, and the German forces race straight towards Hanno and the church. That's another objective fanning out with a lot of Panzer 1s and Panzer 2s towards this hill which is on the left hand flank and they're hoping to draw the French armour in there who have also deployed and they deployed blind uh, on this hill where they start to manoeuvre their Hotchkiss 35 tanks into a gun line on that hill. They've got panards covering the church and they've got infantry moving up into the village where we can see the Belgian armour just waiting uh, biding its time as German motorsieur infantry start to arrive and approach the town. They've got four door knockers with them uh, basically covering them but they will move left. An OP team dashes across the road to enter into the village, a rather risky maneuver but there's a huge column of civilians which is blocking basically the traffic uh, and the roads and causing uh, some consternation as we can see here. Uh, however, it is also screening the German forces and the civilians are in absolute panic, uh, especially when we begin to see the first shots ring out. Uh, the, the column is very congested. Uh, the German crutches and drive through the civilians and um, 
effectively they moved their guns over here, started to move them and as you can see the panzers are going around the column, they're moving on that hill. The panards though however have taken up that defensive position with the AM MR 35s. Now here's a controversial moment because they open fire, all misses being allocated to the column and they destroy 12 Krad Schutzen, much to the Germans ire, but also 12 civilians are cut down in this, in this opening salvo. In Hanau, the Belgians are unaware of what's going on as the Germans press with uh, eight rads and uh, with four rads, excuse me, into the town. The Panzers continue to move, hoping to draw more and more armor onto this flank. And that's what basically happens, a small arms fire and the Panards start to open up. We also get the Panzer twos make a, a Panzer one to make a dash towards the AMR 35s. They knock out some as smoke is used by the Germans to cover that hill and basically prevent those guns from basically ripping holes in their Panzers. Uh, the Panzer two and one mixed light platoons move forward and try and engage again the Panards, but they are ineffective. Uh, they start to take damage whilst the OP and Signaler manages to get into the spire of the church supported by the Kratschutz and he brings down mortar fire very accurately and pins some of the French infantry moving into the town. Here we can see the divisional commander moving forward. Uh, he's basically now switching the, the attack so they're going to go towards the right hand flank now where German infantry is pouring into Hanau. Uh, the Belgians appear to be surrounded and trapped. They've already lost that one bridge and uh, the four rats have taken heavy machine gun fire and retreated. Uh, they can't go in there with the three heavy machine guns basically located. Although it's quiet, there's the intermittent fire as we see two of the Belgian tanks race out of the town, possibly to cover that objective. But we've also got lots of action around the periphery of the town and the Germans are just building up, getting ready to make a counter-stroke move and switch their armor to the right flank. Um, it's been quite a, a, a fearful moment, but now they've got their pack guns up there. They think they can cover and hold this flank and the Kratschutzen are ordered in to remove those A35s, all bailed and damaged. The heavy machine gun team has been destroyed by uh, mortar fire. Uh, the Panards are pushed back ultimately by weight of machine gun fire, but then French armor has started to arrive and there must be at least nine Hotchkiss tanks now and they start to fire destroying uh, a Panzer II tank and keep looming forward but they're moving slowly and cautiously they're not being aggressive when out of the sky a Stuka descends and basically blows an H-35 to pieces with one of its bombs a direct hit destroying that uh, the Germans basically now think they're in a quite a good position. They've lured all that armor onto that open flank. They know they've got the mobility, especially with the displacement or stormtrooper move. And the French tanks start to bog, moving around. Panzer engineers arrive now to remove the obstacles. And uh, you can see the switch as the German uh, tanks start to move to the other side of the battlefield. They don't want to engage the army, they're going to try and get round, secure these objectives and basically hold them in place. Uh, as you can see the Panzer 1's are going to be supporting the infantry and maybe move on that right flank. A couple of Panzer 2's there now are going to be looking to secure that entry point for the infantry, supporting very well with the infantry and that Geb gun in the left hand corner. So it's really looking very nicely posed. We've only had six turns, guys, to be continued. Well, what can we say in postscript, guys? It's really nicely posed for this uh, action. We've got a lot coming up because we've got, in six turns, the refit. They're going to start rotating platoons. Uh, how long can the French hold out? Will the uh, switch work for the Panzers? We may see the arrival of heavier tanks. There's going to be a lot of issues about damage and basically controlling that damage and getting those platoons back into operational order. Uh, as I said, there is a lot coming up in just this segment of the game and then we've got to go uh, into the back segment which is to towards dusk. Also, in the longer term, we're going to have some air action over the Muse, the poor RAF. And meanwhile, let's never forget the unknown soldiers who are also somewhat forgotten. And uh, let's never forget the fallen guys because this is Blitzkrieg and it's over and out for me until next time.
time. Bye for now.